All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I want to pick on this guy. I already made one video this morning, and um, I just wanted to keep it short and positive and to the point uh, to mix it up a little bit. But I also, um, I got to pick on this guy, okay? Now, this guy, his channel is called No Longer Lost. Alright, and just to give an idea of uh, what this guy teaches, I think this is probably about as much as you need to know. Um, you know, anybody that talks about reincarnation, I, I wonder about them and their ability to think. And the reason is, um, is just from a logical standpoint, you think of all the torture that you go through in this life, all the things that you have to endure, all the pain and the suffering, you know, in particular the older you get, the more this idea of reincarnation is just straight up stupid. Who would want to go through this life again and again over and over? Constant torture, constant pain, constant suffer, suffering over and over again and again. And the idea is just straight straight up stupid there's really no other way to is there a nice way to put it you got brain damage if you're believing this stuff those of us that are born of God we want to get the hell out of this world right we want to get out of this world into a better world we don't want to go through cycles of suffering come on man all right here's the issue though Right? This, what this guy teaches is what 99.9% .9 of the pastors in the world today, the preachers that stand behind the pulpit, they all teach the same thing that this guy's teaching in this video. And um, notice here in his description, it says Revelation 20 verses 4 through 6 tells us exactly what we'll need to endure in the bonus 1000 year age we get in this generation for enduring Christ until the end alright so uh, you've heard me say talk about this bonus 1000 years I've said it over and over and over and now we finally have found somebody to actually admit it that he believes there's coming a bonus 1,000 years. The problem, uh, there are many problems. I mean, that's, that's not in the Bible at all. But let's listen to what he says when he gives descriptions of this bonus 1,000 years. Now, I gotta apologize for the, there's a lot of background noise, all right? So bear with me. As a follower of my channel, that we don't have a lot of time left before the end of this age when the beast's reign, the beast of Revelation 13, takes hold in September of 2025. So that's interesting. Um, he, he claims that the beast will take hold, that will reign in the September of 2025. Okay. Now, that is two years from now. In two years, you will have forgotten what he said. He, he himself will have forgotten what he said. And then he'll ignore it, right? And he'll pretend like he never said it. He'll just not even talk about how wrong he was or how stupid he is. He won't mention it, a word of it. Guarantee it. They never do. All right, so... The obvious problem here is that the beast is what it represents okay so 
it's the kingdom of this world all right it's essentially this world Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world all right the beast is a kingdom and also the beast in Revelation is a kingdom it's the kingdom of this world the idea that there is no kingdom of this world it's nonsense it's ignorant is what it is and so we can put the pieces together from Daniel and Revelation and understand that the fourth beast of Daniel is the beast of Revelation and the fourth beast of Daniel is the Roman Empire therefore the beast of Revelation is the Roman Empire and the Roman Empire has not come to an end as many people might tell you or even imagine the Roman impact the Roman Empire transitioned the beast the Roman Empire that was and is not and yet is transitioned from a physical empire into a spiritual empire all right and that beast is also it actually specifically says the great whore rides upon the beast and that beast is the Roman Empire and the great whore is the Roman Catholic Church see the Roman Empire transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church now you have a great entity here that does everything in its power to deceive people and to get people to believe that the beast and the Antichrist is anything and everything except what it re re what it really is right it, anything and everything except the Pope in Rome and the Roman Catholic Church okay so let's continue according to the timeline given to us by the revelation of Jesus Christ but what I want to talk about with you today briefly is enjoying the time that we actually do have left in this age <laughs> uh, God has given us such an abundance of beauty to enjoy, uh, to get away from the troubles of the world, to get away from all the distractions that media and social media and really everything we look at is constantly trying to distract us from what's really here and what we really have to enjoy on this earth. Um, and it got me thinking as I'm on here on the shore of uh, Lake Superior today um, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan got me thinking really how beautiful the millennial earth is, is going to actually be. I mean, this beauty, you, you can't compare it to anything else man-made, obviously. But with the millennial earth that's coming for us in this age who face the beast and beat it, according to Revelation 24, 5, and 6, the millennial earth is going to be <laughs> incomprehensibly beautiful. Um... As I've talked about in several videos over the course of the last year, when God rebuilds the millennial earth, it's all going to be based in silica. Silica, like sand here. The sand we're looking at is pure silica. And it's one of the strongest... Right. I hope you can hear, but he's basically saying that the new earth is going to be built in sand. Pounds on earth. And our resurrected bodies uh, in the first resurrection that happened after the last execution of the final saint left on earth by the end of the fifth seal of Revelation. You catch that? Yeah, neither did I. Resurrected bodies uh, in the first resurrection that happened after the last... Okay, so... Jesus isn't the first resurrection, according to uh, this fella here. So Jesus died in vain, according to this gentleman right here. 
You think this stuff should be taken lightly? Last execution of the final... After the last execution. I, I can't even comprehend what the heck this guy's saying. Our resurrected bodies... In the first resurrection that happened after the... The first resurrection happens after... Last execution. The last execution. So after the last execution, there's a resurrection. Of the final saint left. Last execution of the final saint. On earth, buddy. Execution of the final saint. End of the fifth seal of revelation. So after the last saint gets executed, there's a resurrection. Okay. So when it comes to the seals, I was always curious about this. So. You know, I wanted to learn this, and it, it does take time. Right, when he's talking about the fifth seal, let's go open this up. Alright, in Revelation 6, verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the souls of them that were slain, for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season, and tell their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, all right, so when he opens the sixth seal, it's the end of the world. So the fifth seal has already been opened. <laughs> it's, I don't know how you, you don't see it, man. Honest to God. Because these things are happening right now right now they're happening all right um, our resurrected bodies in that first resurrection will be made of silica that will be able to live a thousand years all right so we're going to get resurrected into bodies of sand according to this gentleman right here if you know scripture you know that humanity used to be able to live around a thousand years. Methuselah lived 969 years. Noah lived 950 years. And so our bodies will be remade of silica. Because before the flood, men lived 900 plus years. Our body is going to be made of sand. I yeah, I, mean, I could say, well, because Noah lived 950 years, and Methuselah lived 969 years, because that happened, when Jesus returns, we're going to be turned into marshmallows. We're going to have marshmallow bodies. I could say that. What would be different? It's based on nothing. This, the same with him. He's basing this idea that we're going to be remade of sand and basing that on nothing. He says sand, I say marshmallows. Who's right? We, we can't both be right. It's either one or the other. It can't be both. Or it could be neither. In the resurrection, 
Abraham, and also in the second resurrection, a thousand years later, all of the rest of the death. A second resurrection. The, the Bible makes no mention at all of a second resurrection. That does that. Anybody ever mention that? What are you talking about? Second resurrection. Oh, there it is. No, that's not it. It's not there. It's not there. It's not anywhere at all. In fact, you know what would be um, a good study for somebody that's eager is to do a word search on the word resurrection. And uh, I think this would help some people, really. Uh, it, help, it helps me. To get a you know clear understanding of what the Bible says about the resurrection and I'm telling you there is no mention no suggestion no implication of any sort of this idea of two resurrections none whatsoever uh, if you go to um, like Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 it says and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and it, if this is parallel with what we read in John chapter 5 verse 29 and shall come forth and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation this is exactly parallel with what we read in Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 now just so nobody's misunderstanding none of us have done good the only way that God can see us as good is if we are born of God it's the only way if we're born of the Spirit of God then God is in us and because God is in us we are good because he is good all right that's the only way all right so now this all happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there can be no dispute anybody that teaches otherwise is a liar and a deceiver we'll go to 1st Thessalonians 4 when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then the dead in Christ shall rise first and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them this happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven right when Jesus comes then we are resurrected alright we are resurrected and when he comes this is when we are changed and we put on immortality right and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so there is no more death after the judgment of God after the great day of the Lord after the end of the world dead that's resurrected at that time will also be resurrected in silica and then judgment will happen and those written in the Lamb's book of life will get to enter All right, just so there's no confusion here when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is judgment day it's the great day of the Lord the judgment of God has already been given to us that have 
everlasting life. The judgment of God on Judgment Day will be those, the rest of, um, of everybody, right? The rest of the people will be judged. And that judgment will be just. And that judgment will be death. Alright. Enter into the new Jerusalem. But for the thousand years that's for this generation only that faces Revelation 13 and the beast and rejects the mark of the beast and is beheaded for our witness to Jesus in rejecting the mark of the beast. We're in the first resurrection and we get that thousand years with Jesus. And I cannot imagine what everything is going to look like. A, a strong, flexible silica. All the leaves that we look at, you know, will be chiming, will be chiming and singing in the breeze <laughs> constantly. The water rushing. <laughs> I, I just... When you think of like a uh, an old church with all stained glass windows. Is this guy on drugs? When you think of like a uh, an old church with all stained glass windows, that's what nature is going to look like for us in those thousand years. Um, and will only be with the people who have gone through this age with us and who have defeated the beast and have gone through what Revelation 24, 5, and 6 dictates that we go through. Those will be the only people left on earth at that time. And Satan... Think about what he's saying. Alright. So, he's saying that the only people on the earth will be saved people. This is the point that I make day after day. Every time I talk about this, this is what they say. There will only be saved people during this thousand year period their fantasy or whatever you want to call it is that Jesus comes and only the saved people live during this thousand years alright and they say Satan is locked up for this thousand years and then what they will never get into and what they hide from and what they ignore and what they are completely ignorant of is that in verse 9 after the thousand years Satan goes and he gathers together his people. He shall go out to deceive the nations and gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the silica sand. of the sea and they went up on the breath of the earth and campus the camp the camp of compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them who all the saved people see that so God is going to destroy all the saved people according to Mr. Sandman 
gone through what Revelation 24, 5, and 6 dictates that we go through. That, those will be the only people left on earth. Right there it is. At that time. And Satan himself will be bound for those thousand years. And Satan, he even says, Satan's going to be bound. The only people living during this thousand years are saved people. And at the end of the thousand years, Satan gathers all the saved people. All right, who else could it be? And he gathers them to battle against God, and God destroys them all. Whew. To me, this guy is standing on the wrong side of the fence. So there will be no temptation. And of course, we'll spend those thousand years with the people we love, with the people we know that we go through this with, who understand the truth of the age and what we really have to face. To get through this, we'll go through it with them. Our wives, our husbands, our brothers. Our... Yeah. So, I mean, we're getting, we're crossing over that line of ignorance into that world of stupidity. Right? For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven. Who understand the truth of the age and what we really have to face. To get through this, we'll go through it with them. Our wives, our husbands, our brothers, our sisters, our parents, our children, our friends. Uh, you know, there's something that I, I want to talk about. In, just, just come to mind, okay? If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, um, this was very interesting, huh? Uh, number one, we're told to love one another to love even our enemies. We'll get into that. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like I could talk all day about this, but um, let me try to get to the point. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, brethren and sister, yeah, and he, his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. This is can only mean one thing, and that is the structure of this world that we're in, where we have a mother and father and a wife and children and brothers and sisters, all right? That's the structure of this world, and this world is coming to an end. All right, and so if you love this world, the love of God is not in you. So, yeah, I think it's important. To understand that this world is coming to an end and it, it's everything is going to be new and there was there's going to be no more advantage one over another no man will have an advantage over another man all right we're all gonna be we're all gonna be the same we're all gonna be equal in, in this world there's much corruption because power um, corrupts and in the life to come there is no there is no 
power one man over another like what we see in this world in the world to come there won't be that power structure it's coming to an end and uh, that's that's what Jesus means in Luke chapter 14 when he says if any man hate not his father his mother his wife his husband what well, wait a second no it doesn't say that does it <laughs> that would be a mistake if it did any man hate his wife okay Now, what in the world? Ah, uh, you know what? I gotta cheat. I can't remember. Was I not? Did I, I missed it, didn't I? I just went straight up over it, through it, missed it completely. Maybe it wasn't there the first time. I don't know. Anyways, um, in First John chapter 2, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So this whole structure, this whole world is coming to an end. Alright, that's important, I think. It's important to know that and to understand it. That, hey, you know, you're clinging to worldly things that are going to come to an end. And to be a pure disciple of Jesus is to know that and to understand that. And to not love the things of this world. In Revelation 21 verse 5, Jesus says, Behold, I make all things new he's gonna make everything new and that's what this is referring to in Luke 14 that these things are of the world and this is going away All right. everything is going to be new and we'll be here on this earth with Jesus learning from him for a thousand years learning everything that we could so if you're not learning now, you're not going to learn later. Think about that. Possibly grasp in those thousand years to become kings and priests in the coming age after that, the new Jerusalem. Right. So he's saying that we're not kings and priests now? If you're not a king and priest of God right now, then you're not saved. You're not one of us. You're not of the chosen elect of God. You're not born of the Spirit of God. You are not saved, sealed, secured, and sanctified forever. If you are not a king and priest of God right now. And this is astonishing, really. Why would you even suggest that you're not a priest of God right now knowing full well that even the children of Israel were considered a kingdom of priest and an holy nation and even now are we a royal priesthood that hasn't changed if you're gonna say well that's gonna happen in the future well you better jump on board while you can man because the future is now Jerusalem which is the first time that we'll see the father's face and his face will light that entire 1500 mile cube right. good job on the math there partner it's a good job on the math okay in 1st John chapter 3 verse 2 beloved now are we the sons of God 
and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All right, this happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. You, city, I want you to really think about and ponder on and meditate on what our reward is in this age. Because what we have to go through, I say it all the time, I say it because it's so true. What we have to go through is going to be so ridiculously hard. Yeah, you know, that supposes that we're, what we're going through now is uh, some sort of utopia. Everything is jolly. Uh, there are no liars. There are no deceivers. It's easy to get saved. It's easy to be... Why, well, you know what? According to this guy, he's not even saved. He's not. A, if you're not a priest of God, you're not saved. If you're not a king and priest of God, you are not saved. So what is he talking about? I I don't know what he's talking about. In the world, you shall have tribulation. In John chapter 16, Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. That's why we get the bonus age because there's coming a time when it's really hard. So if Jesus comes back today, what are you going to say? I want to be next to this guy right here. I want to be standing right here on this beach with this guy right here when Jesus comes back. And I want to hear his explanation for why Jesus can't come yet. I would love to hear that. I would love to be there when this guru explains to the Lord why he can't come back today. I would love that. I think that would be an entertaining conversation. We get the thousand years with Christ on earth that we get because the Father knows that this is the most evil time in human history and that to navigate the lies that we have to navigate through this to make it to the end in these next two years as a second... So, is this terrible period in the future or is it now? Huh? 
is this terrible time period of lies is that in the future or is that now in third fourth and fifth seals play out in revelation chapter six again i, I think i already went over that those seals have clearly been opened when the sixth seal is open that's the end of the world it's not rocket science he knows that as scripture says even the most elect in Christ could be deceived even the most elect I mean if you're extra elect you're super duper elect you could be deceived Dig deeply into my channel. Very deep. Oh, I'm digging deep. I mean, you gotta dig deep when there's so much. Well, I won't say it. I've got 110, I think this is the 111th video I've made in the last year. And I need you to really let the concepts of what the Spirit is teaching through me absorb in you so that it becomes part of you. Not just knowledge, but it becomes part of you. So that when you have to face the lies that you're going to have to face, and you have to face the consequences and the persecution that we're going to have to face, and the ridicule, and being unable as Neuralinks, Neuralinks and people... And being unable as Neuralinks, Neuralinks... See, you know, this is the kind of crazy st stuff that we have to endure. You got all the crazies out there teaching things that they ought not teach. And the problem is, man, the problem is that what this guy teaches it's the same thing that 99.9% .9 of the preachers today that stand behind the pulpit in front of a congregation of people, they teach the same thing. They teach the idea of a thousand bonus years. Now some of them um, teach as this guy teaches this idea that it's only going to be saved people only the saved people are going to be living in this thousand years all right in other words god god's going to get y'all all right and then there are others that teach this idea that there will be a second chance for unsaved people so uh, there's going to be a thousand year bonus period where the unsaved will get another opportunity to be saved and during this thousand years the saved people will be in their resurrected bodies and they will be ruling over the unsaved and they will be having children now to me those people are teaching a thousand years of dirty sex a thousand years a bonus thousand years where you're in your resurrected body having uh, you know gl what glorified sex or whatever that's I mean they won't come out and say it's gonna be a thousand years it's, I heard one guy he said he said it's gonna be like uh, the you're gonna be in the body that you were like when you were 30 years old you're gonna be in that kind of body for a thousand years and having children I shared that video a couple of weeks ago right in first John chapter 2 it says for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of 
the world and the world passes away in the lust thereof but he that doeth will but he that doeth the will of God abides forever so the lust of the world is going to be done away with all right so we know that there will be no more death no more lust there will be no more crying no more sorrow no more pain and we know that there will be no more marrying and giving in marriage right and there will be uh, no more one man having an advantage over another man we know that whatever we build with our hands is our own that we don't work for others and we don't have others working for us we will have our own land our own place and we won't share um, uh, you know a room or a property with another that we will be free in all things and equal in all things and we will have life that lasts forever right um, I don't know what to say about this Nero links as I talked about in my most recent video, uh, we'll, we won't be able to c compete anymore um, yeah, in workspaces and things like that. We're going to have to know what we're really battling for, or we will succumb to the beast. And if there's one thing that you cannot do, because your eternity depends on it, is you cannot succumb to the temptations of this age. It's an interesting video. Interesting video. Um, yeah, interesting video. I don't know what to say about this stuff right here. This you cannot succumb to the temptations of this age. Well, you know, I guess. Uh, I could end it on this, right? So in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us how to pray, right? He says, don't be like the Catholics and the hypocrites, but after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.